In the previous section, we studied the production of images by mirrors. Optical images can also be created through refraction by lenses. A lens is simply a piece of glass, plastic, or other clear material that is curved on one or both faces. The curves cause light rays passing through the lens to bend. The bending of light by a thin lens can be described by fairly simple equations. The bending by very thick lenses, however, is very complicated. A thin lens is referred to as thin because, compared to its diameter, it is very thin. Light rays passing through a thin lens behave in a specific fashion with regards to the focal points of the lens. One kind of thin lens is a converging thin lens. When light rays that are parallel to the axis of a converging thin lens strike the lens surface, they are bent by the lens in such a way that they converge and focus on the far side of the lens. Light rays that pass through a focal point before striking the converging lens are deflected by the lens to a path parallel to the lens axis. In a diverging thin lens, the roles of the two focal points are reversed. When light rays that are parallel to the lens axis pass through the lens, they are deflected to diverge as if the light came directly from the first focus. Light rays that initially are directed towards the far focus are turned outward by the lens and move on parallel to the lens axis. Converging lenses are often convex on both sides. That is, they curve outward on both sides. However, one side can be flat or even concave as long as the lenses are thicker in the middle than at the edges. This thickness ensures that the convex side dominates the deflection of light rays. Diverging lenses are often concave on both sides, giving them an hourglass shape. However, one side can be flat, or even convex, as long as the lenses are thinner in the middle than at the edges. This central thinness ensures that the concave side dominates the deflection of light rays. Now that we know what features constitute a converging or a diverging lens, what determines the value of the focal length f? What do you suppose will happen to the focal length of this lens if we increase the curvature of the lens? Correct. As the curvature increases and the lens gets thicker, the focal length decreases. This is because the light hits the lens at a greater angle and, therefore, refracts more. This is true for both converging and diverging lenses. Now suppose the lens is glass with an index of refraction of n equals 1.5 and we immerse the lens in water with n equals 1.3. What happens to the focal length? Correct. The focal length increases. This is because the difference between the index of refraction of the lens and that of the surrounding medium is less than in air, and as a result, the light rays refract less. In general, lenses with more curvature bend light more and have shorter focal lengths. In addition, the greater the difference between the index of refraction of the lens and that of the surrounding medium the shorter the focal length. Now let's study image formation by a lens. As we did for mirrors, we will locate the image by tracing certain principal rays that are easy to find as they move from a single point on the object. Remember, however, that though we consider only a few principal rays here, light rays from this point strike all parts of the lens, and all of them contribute to the image. The first ray goes in parallel and out oriented with the focus. With a converging lens, the light ray travels through the focus on the far side of the lens. With a diverging lens, the parallel ray is bent by the lens and leaves the far side as if it came from the focus on the near side. The second ray, as it approaches the lens, is aligned with one of the focal points but it leaves the lens traveling parallel to the lens axis. With a converging lens,
the light ray actually passes through the focus on the near side of the lens. With a diverging lens, on the near side of the lens the light ray is directed towards the focus on the far side, and then at the lens it turns parallel to the axis. In general, these two rays suffice to locate the image. However, if the two focal points are equidistant from the lens, a third locating ray can be drawn. This ray extends from the object and passes through the center of the lens where it meets the lens axis. Because the ray goes through the center of the lens where the two lens surfaces are parallel, it does not bend. The image produced by the converging lens is now obvious. In this case, it is a real inverted image that is bigger than the object. For the diverging lens, the image is slightly more difficult to find. Because it is a virtual image, we must trace the outgoing rays backward until they cross. This reveals a virtual upright image that is smaller than the object. Keep in mind that we considered only two simple examples of image production by lenses. In this case, the image from the converging lens was real, but sometimes images from converging lenses are virtual. Finding them will necessitate tracing outgoing rays backward. Except for the equation relating frequency to mirror radius, the equations we use for mirrors also apply to lenses. As with mirrors, the focal length is positive for a converging lens and negative for a diverging lens. The image distance is positive if real and negative if virtual. The object distance is almost always positive. Lens magnification is positive if upright and negative if inverted. The lens equation is used exactly as the mirror equation is, and a chart explaining where to expect the image and the image's characteristics is also the same. We now know how to find and describe the images created by a single lens, but what happens when two or more lenses are involved? In such cases, the image of the first optical element serves as the object for the second lens. Notice that process produces an upright real image. A wide variety of optical instruments, such as telescopes and microscopes, take advantage of image produced by combinations of lenses and mirrors.